Okay, in this section we're going to talk about the idea of continuity. So continuity means that we have a continuous line, there's no breaks and there's no holes at all, there's no vertical asymptotes, none of that's happening. The graph is connected all the way through. For something to be continuous, that means that you can continually have your pen on the paper and you can draw it without having to raise it up. For instance, this right here, if I go along here, I have to take the pen off the board and then continue it again. That would not be considered continuous because there's a hole in there. And of course, vertical asymptotes, one goes up and one goes down. That's a separation there as well, so it wouldn't be considered continuous. So we're going to take a look at how you can tell if a graph is continuous. We're going to look at a certain point. So we're going to look at the value x equals c, and we're going to see if a graph is continuous at that point. Now, in order for it to be continuous at that certain point, all three of these conditions must be met. Okay, the first one is f of c is defined. That means that if I plug in that value, I should see a closed circle on my graph. I shouldn't be dividing by zero. None of that should be happening. So it's defined. There's no vertical asymptote and there's no holes at c. That's the first condition. The second one, the limit must exist. Okay, we talked about before in a previous section that a limit has to exist if the left and right hand limits approach the same number. If they don't, that means you probably have a vertical asymptote or you might have a break in the graph. So that's the second condition that must be true in order to be continuous at x equals c. The third one must also be there too. The limit as x approaches c of f of x has to equal the y value here when you plug c in. So limit of f of x has to be equal to f of c. Now why do we have that condition? Let's take a look at this situation down here. In this case, the first two pieces would be satisfied. f of c is defined because we have a closed circle there. And the limit was this because you're approaching the left and right hand limits, they approach the same number. But if I didn't put the third condition in here, that means what I have drawn here is not considered to be continuous. So that's why I have to put in number three. So instead of having this, the closed circle down here, if the closed circle was actually drawn inside the open circle, then that would make it all uh, connected. So that's why you have to have the third condition as well. So all three of these must be satisfied in order for you to have continuity at x equals c. If you don't, if any, any one of these is not true, that means it's considered discontinuous. Now there are a couple different types of discontinuities and that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, so here's a, the two types of discontinuities. So again, if those three criterion are not met, then it means it must be uh, discontinuous. So here's two different types of discontinuities, removable and non-removable. Okay, if it's removable, that means that it's possible that you could possibly make it continuous again by assigning a point to fill up a hole. So in this drawing right here, there's an open circle, we have a point down below. What I could do is I could assign another point to plug in and fill up that hole, and then the whole thing would be continuous again. So it's possible that I can make it continuous for the first condition. The second one is non-removable discontinuity. This means that no matter what I do, I cannot make it continuous. For instance, this drawing right here, the graph is separated. One goes up and one goes down. Sure, I could plug in the hole if I wanted to, but that wouldn't make it continuous because there's still going to be a break in between the graph that's there. So in that case, this is considered non-removable. Other types of graphs that have non-removable discontinuities would be ones where there's a vertical asymptote. If there's a vertical asymptote, you can't plug in a hole. You could plug in something to make the graph defined at that point, but that wouldn't mean it's going to be continuous because the graph would still be going up and going down. And so in that case, there's nothing you could do. So again, uh, non-removal, there's nothing that you can do to make the graph continuous. Okay, so now we're going to do an example that kind of puts together everything we've just been talking about. We're going to talk about how do we identify places where the graph is discontinuous, and then we're also going to label those discontinuities as removable or non-removable. We're going to do all that based on this graph that's given here. So the first thing we want to do is identify any place where the graph is discontinuous. Okay, that's going to occur when there's a break in the graph or there's a hole in the graph. That's the two places where it'll be discontinuous. So first, when I notice this, I notice that there's a separation here, the discontinuity at x equals negative 2. So that's the, the first one. Uh, second one is I got a break right here at 0. Another one, I have a hole at 2. It's another place where it's not continuous. And then over here, 4, 
that's got a, a vertical asymptote, another place where the graph is disconnected. Remember that any time when you're drawing something, you have to lift your pen off the paper and continue it again. That's a place where the graph is not continuous. Even happens here at two because when I draw this line down here, I still got to lift my pen off the paper and put it back in order to start drawing that again. Okay, so I, these four values, it's discontinuous. Now from this list, I have to classify them as either removable or non-removable discontinuities. Okay, so first, let's talk about removable. Removable means that you have just a hole, and that hole can be plugged in by some other value. The only place where I have a hole here where I can fill it in and make the graph continuous again is going to be this one right here. That's going to be at x is equal to 2. So x equals 2, that would be the only one where that's a removable uh, discontinuity because again I can go ahead and assign a, uh, a point there and I can plug up that hole. Now the non-removable ones are ones where you have vertical asymptotes or the graph is separated. So in this case right here, this is one where nothing I can do to fill in that hole that's going to be uh, separated no matter what. So I have x is equal negative 2 is going to be a non-removable discontinuity. Happens also at 0 because there's a separation there that I can't fill in. So this is going to be 0. Uh, and then the last one is this one here. There's a vertical asymptote. Again, I can't make these two things connected by assigning a point. So that's the other one that's going to be considered discontinuous. So, um, so again, the only one that's removable is going to be the one right here at 2. The other ones are going to be non-removable.